From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Donald Trump returns. A very returns. special hello to Pennsylvania. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful Commonwealth. Donald Trump returns to Pennsylvania for the first time since the assassination attempt on his life. But comments he made about Kamala Harris at a black journalist convention have sparked new controversy. Overnight here at home, the front of this 7-Eleven destroyed after an SUV went crashing through the storefront overnight. What police say led to the major crash. And we're in the middle of a heat wave. A heat advisory takes effect this morning, and it'll feel like 100 degrees by the afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Perel. Welcome to Thursday. And we are off to a steamy start, and it's only heating up from here. Meteorologist Kate Bilo here with our next weather forecast. Good morning, Kate. Good morning to you, Janelle and Jim. Yeah, we are waking up to hazy conditions. The heat and humidity really building today. Some of this haze is actually from a smoke plume that drifted our way from the west coast that will be moving out as we head through today and into tomorrow but some of the haze also just created by the heat and the humidity very high dew points out there beautiful shot here in margate this is the place to be find a pool head to the beach cool off any way you can because we're right back into that extreme heat and humidity in a heat advisory today. 78 is the current temperature in Philadelphia, 78 in Atlantic City as well. It's a little bit comfier in Allentown, comfy a relative term. It's in the 60s, but it is quite humid outside and we are heating up quickly. Today is uh, probably the brightest day of the week and fewer thunderstorm chances today than what we'll see tomorrow and Saturday. So that means we're just going to heat up rapidly. Mid 90s out there today, but look at these feels like temperatures triple digit temperatures feels like temperatures heat index values right through the afternoon and evening heat advisory will kick in at 10 a.m. It'll go all the way through 8 o'clock tomorrow for heat index values all across the region between 97 and 102 and not much relief on the way coming up. I'll tell you about shower and storm chances and the high humidity that may linger right into the weekend. Let's see how the roads look this morning. Here's Chandler. Good morning, good morning Kate. Roads looking pretty good. Still not a single accident to report out there. Looking very quiet, nice and clear on the 42 freeway. Our camera right around 295. Nothing to worry about here. Headlights traveling northbound tail lights southbound. Just a reminder, we still have that long term road work between Lower Landing Road on 42 southbound and the Black Horse Pike there. But other than that, that lane shift is the only thing you'll find on 42. So good to go. But as you travel up the New Jersey Turnpike in the southbound lanes right near Burlington Mount Holly Road, we have a new construction zone that does have a lane closure now in place, but no longer seeing any closures across the PA Turnpike. We cleared all overnight road work in the eastbound lanes as well as across the northeast extension, and we We've also cleared that construction that we were following from overnight that was closing down Route 23 in East Pikeland Township. That roadway, Jim, is now reopened. Thank you, Chandler. Breaking right now, a 16 year old boy is fighting for his life after he was shot in Northeast Philadelphia. That shooting happening just after 2 o'clock this morning. This is on the 4300 block of Loring Street in Holmesburg. Police say the boy showed up at Jefferson Frankfurt Hospital with a gunshot wound to his chest. Witnesses telling officers they heard the gunshots and then saw three people running. So far, there have been no arrests and no word about a motive in this case. Also breaking overnight, a man standing in front of a 7 Eleven was hurt when the SUV you see on your screen plowed right through the front of that convenience store. You see the front of the store left with significant damage. The crash happening just before midnight. This is along Bustleton Avenue in Oxford Circle. Police say the driver was driving down Harbison Avenue when he hit a delivery truck and then spun out of control, hitting the man as the SUV went through the store. We're told that man has minor injuries. Presidential race heating up with former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris both turning their focus on black voters. And this morning, Trump is facing fallout after he questioned Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity during a convention of black journalists. And this morning, we are hearing the vice president's response. CBS News Philadelphia's Jan Kerbeo here now in studio this morning. And this is getting a lot of attention this morning. Jan, good morning. Janelle and Jim, good morning. Sure is grabbing a whole lot of headlines today and happening here in the city of Philadelphia today. City, state, and local union leaders are all set to gather to denounce the remarks former President Donald Trump made at that convention of black journalists yesterday. So here is what everyone is talking about. Yesterday in Chicago, 
Chicago. At the annual convention for the National Association of Black Journalists, Trump had a heated exchange during a Q&A where he falsely questioned Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity. The topic started as DEI, or diversity, equity, inclusion. The former president was asked about how some of his supporters have labeled the vice president as a DEI hire and that she is only the presumptive Democratic nominee because she's black. Here's the exchange that followed. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody a... should look into that, too, when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. The former president would go on to continue his campaign yesterday, stepping on the stage in Harrisburg, his first visit to Pennsylvania since that assassination attempt less than three weeks ago. Meantime, Vice President Harris is firing back. Harris's mother is Indian and her father is Jamaican. Here's what she had to say in front of a crowd in Houston. Donald Trump spoke at the annual meeting of the National Association of Black Journalists. And it was the same old show. The divisiveness and the disrespect. And let me just say, the American people deserve better. The American people deserve better. The American people deserve a leader who tells the truth, a leader who does not respond with hostility and anger when confronted with the facts. We deserve a leader who understands that our differences do not divide us. They are an essential source of our strength. The Harris campaign also released this statement in response to Trump's remarks. Today's tirade is simply a taste of the chaos and division that has been a hallmark of Trump's MAGA rallies. Back here at home, State Senator Vincent Hughes, Philadelphia City Council member Kendra Brooks, and local leaders and members of SEIU will gather today to denounce the former president's interview at NABJ. That is all happening in the city at 11 o'clock this morning. Jim. Thank you very much, Jam, for that update. Developing this morning, the Department of Defense says the mastermind who plotted the September 11th attacks has agreed to a plea deal. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and two other 9-11 defendants have reached pre-trial agreements that will, as reported by the New York Times, allow them to escape the death penalty. Some families who lost loved ones in the 9-11 attack had this to say. Today's case were hundreds of family members for the first time ever was a monumental development because we were able to finally see and understand what our lawyers have known for 23 years. Muhammad and his co-defendants have been in U.S. custody for 21 years, most of that time spent at Guantanamo, Guantanamo Bay. 708 now, some voters on the main line, you may have to be voting at a different polling location this November. That's because Radnor Township, they've changed the boundaries of its voting districts. 5,000 voters are impacted by the change, and some of them, they're questioning why the redistricting is happening three months out from the presidential election. Well, the township commissioner says they redistrict every 10 years. It's part of a requirement that's in the township's charter. The goal is to have basically every vote in the township be of equal value to every other vote. So we want to ensure that within some reasonable margin of error, every ward has a population that's roughly similar to that of every other ward. The township says residents will get three mailings and those will let them know if their polling locations have changed. If you do happen to show up at the wrong location, you will still be allowed to vote, but you'll have to vote on a provisional ballot.